you, thank you. Emeril Lagasse here, welcome to Emeril Live. Hey, you know what? I've been stuffing things for years. Yeah, the king of stuffing. I've stuffed chickens, I've stuffed tomatoes. I've even stuffed cupcakes. I'm a little stuffed right now, actually. Thinking about it, you know, let me tell you. Tonight, I'm going to share with you some stuffing secrets. Not just like turkey. Stuffing secrets. Speaking about sharing, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. Stuffing tonight. Stuffing. Stuffing. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna stuff it tonight right here on Emerald Live. Yes, indeed. Wait till you see what we're going to be doing here tonight. Ah, oh, unbelievable. You know, I love to stuff things, and so do a lot of my buddies here at Chelsea Market. And uh, they actually came up with some great ideas for today's menu. Take a look. Hey, Emerald. Lou tells me you're making a mushroom and asparagus stuffed no, trout. You know, mushroom and artichoke stuffed trout. Mushroom artichoke stuffed trout. Boy, that sounds really good. Look at this gorgeous meat. Pancetta stuffed veal chops. We'll slice the pancetta nice and thin so that it melts. This is gonna be one kicked up dish. And for your crab meat stuffed portobello mushroom caps, there's nothing better than fresh crabs. Look what I got for your gorgonzola stuffed pears. Just a flown fresh from Italy. Buon appetito. So, now you know what we're going to be uh, making here tonight. We're going to start and jump right into this with the portobello mushrooms. You know, the portobellos, they have this little thin skin. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to take this thin skin off. We're going to peel the mushroom. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take them, after we peel them up real good, we're going to just put a little uh, olive oil on them, some salt and pepper, and then we're going to roast them. Then what we're going to do while they're roasting, so I'm going to show you how to make a little bechamel sauce. And then with that bechamel sauce, we're going to do something to the mushroom. So you just kind of get the skin just like this between the paring knife and, uh, and your finger or your thumb. Peel it back. You're not really touching the flesh of it. You're just sort of getting rid of this little outside skin here and I find when you do this and peel these type of mushrooms cremini portobello that um, you don't have to go really into the flesh because that's where the meat part of it this is like the steak of mushroom right here portobello so now we get it peeled up simple all right now Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to put them on a uh, little foil that I have here. Good extra virgin olive oil. Both sides. We're going to season them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Salt. Fresh ground pepper. And then we'll do the other side. Now, don't get alarmed because uh, mushrooms absorb the liquid that you apply to them. Oil, stock, water. They're like a sponge. So don't get alarmed. I got the oven on about 400 degrees. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start roasting them. 
Now, bechamel sauce or cream sauce. What is that? Well, it's a mother sauce. There are five mother sauces. Bechamel is one of them. What's that mean, a mother sauce? Well, that means that if you have a mother sauce, you can do lots of other things with it. Take hollandaise as an example. That's a mother sauce. You add tomato product to that, you have a Chiron sauce. See? Just like bechamel. I have a cream sauce or a bechamel sauce. Very simple to make. If I add cheese, now I have a cheese sauce or a Mornay sauce. And I could go on and on and on and on. How do you do it? Real simple. We're just going to start with a roux. And this roux is basically going to be equal parts of flour and butter. I like working with a wooden spoon. Although most people in the recipe will tell you that you should use a whisk. Equal parts, making the roux. You can see it coming together here. Now, cooking the roux, there are a few different stages that you can cook the roux. There's a blonde stage, which is almost happening right now, and that would make the most sense for a cream sauce. Then there's a peanut butter stage. Then it gets to be a dark stage and a darker stage until you almost get it to that dark chocolate stage like you're going to make a great gumbo. All it takes is time, patience. It's all in the roux. Blonde roux's done. I want to flavor it now with a little bit of onion and a little bit of fresh grated nutmeg. Why fresh grated nutmeg? Huh. Well, you know who you are out there. You've had that can of nutmeg in your pantry for about five and a half years. <laughs> Throw it out. It's no good. All right. The onion gets cooked. A little nutmeg. We're going to add a little salt and pepper to this. Got some white pepper. A little bit of salt. Now, as you can see, the roux is hot. So now when you're going to make a sauce, any kind of sauce, one thing's hot, one thing's got to be cold or room temperature. If you got hot and hot, you got lumps. So, some cold milk into the hot roux. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work that roux right into that. You'll never know how thick it's going to be until it comes to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, that's how thick it's going to be. When we come back, I'm going to show you what I mean. Stick around. Doc Gibbs! <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, stuffing it up tonight. Woo! Yeah, happy. All stuffed up. So we made that bechamel sauce, right? And uh, I cooked it about four or five minutes. You want to re-season it? This is what it looks like. Got the whisk. No, those aren't lumps. Those are the actually the onions that we had in there. Normally, in a bechamel sauce, we wouldn't have put the onions. But for this particular recipe, we did, and I'll show you why. Now, you let it cool. It's going to start getting thicker. That's good. When it gets uh, really good and thick, now what we're going to do is we're going to take sort of uh, a little stuffing that we're going to make. We're going to uh, take the bechamel. We're going to add crab meat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to add a little bit of cheddar cheese. First, we're going to fold that over. And then, we want it thick like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just sort of, it's called a classical technique. Don't panic. Don't call 911. <laughs> I don't make the rules up. This is called a panada. Ooh. Ooh la la. <laughs> it just means a little breadcrumbs. I don't make it up. 
Go home and check your Funkin' Wagnall out. <laughs> now, fold it over. See, it's just kind of mm, keeping it together, that panada thing. All right, now, it should be really good and cool. Let's give it a minute. Let's come on over to here. And in this skillet here, I'm going to start with a bit of butter. If you let butter all by itself, beside it getting lonely, it'll burn. So what I like to do, particularly for what I'm going to be adding to the pan here, is we're going to cut it with a little olive oil, which is going to sort of rise. It's going to make the, uh, the burning point temperature rise a little bit. We're going to get a little more uh, for our uh. So, then I'm going to season that. And now I'm going to add sliced mushrooms to this. Those wonderful, wonderful mushrooms from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. <laughs> wonderful. Oh, yeah. Wonderful mushrooms from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. <laughs> now, once we got that going here, we're going to turn the fire up. The mushrooms come out of the oven, the portobello mushrooms. They're like fork tender. See? Now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take them. Watch this, Doc. We're going to stuff them. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Could you just imagine oh, man. getting stuffed with crab meat and bechamel? <laughs> oh, what a feeling. <laughs> so now we're going to stuff them. Hey, this makes a great little luncheon dish, dinner dish. You saw how simple it is. I mean, this ain't rocket science. Come on. I think the toughest thing was peeling the mushroom. All right, we got a little bit left, so I'll put it on mine. <laughs> then a little bit for Doc. Yeah. All right, so now we've got that. You with me so far? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. I'm going to wash the hand thing, you know. Touch the mushroom. Now, when you're ready, you're going to pop these in. The great thing about this dish, you can do this way in advance. Family comes in. You come home from work. Hey, I'm ready. Well, we go back inside the oven with these guys until they get nice and warm and bubbly and, oh. All right, now, back over here. You don't know this, but I've started another stuffing on this side over here. That's why I started with the mushrooms. Now I'm going to season the mushrooms with a little salt. Now watch this. Then I'm going to add some shallots. Shallots. Red onion will work. Some thyme. Garlic. Chives. Parsley. The juice of a little lemon. And some artichokes. Shh, they'll all be doing it. <laughs> Once the mushrooms are cooked, you see, we're just going to fold this in a little bit. Then, a little bit of fish broth. Just a little bit. We're getting that little vapor there. And a little bit of cream. We're going to let this reduce out. When we reduce it out, we're going to add some breadcrumbs, another panada kind of thing. That's going to make a stuffing. When we come back, I'm going to show you how we're going to take it and stuff a trout. Stick around. We'll be right back. Rock it.
Welcome back. Welcome back. Stuffing it up tonight. Stuffing it up. Yes. Now I'm getting ready to do this trout. Let's go back to the, uh, we had the mushrooms, chives, thyme. We finished by adding the cream in here. I was telling you about the breadcrumbs. You see, it's been reducing out over the break. Now the breadcrumbs. We make that panada. Watch what it's going to do. Start with a little bit. You can always add, but it's very, very tough to take away. See, so we got a stuffing going on here. See how thick that is now? Panada. Wow. So, get all of that moisture out of there. Then what we're going to do, we're going to turn the heat down. During a commercial break, I had a few people ask me about this fish stock here. Oh, boy, they were frightened. Fish stock. Basically, you know, when you, uh, you go to the fish market, hopefully you go into the fish market, and you have a good fishmonger. Every now and then, you just uh, get some of the bones from the uh, nine oily fish. You take it home, you cover it with water, you add a little carrot, celery, onion, salt, and pepper. Bring it to a boil, simmer it for 20 to 30 minutes, you got fish stock. Strain it through a strainer, put it in a container, or leave it in the fridge. It'll keep up for a week, or you can freeze it. Okay? Yeah. All right, now, here's what we're going to do. Once the, uh, I bought this trout. I like trout. So what I want to do is I've, and they'll come like this, too, with the bone out, etc. If not, butcher should do that for you. A little salt and pepper, maybe a little essence in there as well. And then what we do is, you take the trout, you take the stuffing after it's cool. <laughs> and you add the stuffing in there, you see? Then, you take some lemon slices, right on, on top like this, fold it over. Then we're going to put it in a, a little pan like this to roast it. We'll season the outside now with a little salt and some pepper. And then what I like to do is before you start baking it, we just take more lemon slices like this. Now, take that off there. Why waste it? A few more slices we need. And you want to have the oven on about 375. We're going to pop this, but before I do that, let me give you another little trick. A little drizzle of olive oil. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put them in there for about 25 to 30 minutes. Simple, fantastic. Another one of those dishes that you could, like, do the day before. Come home. Honey, I'm home. Turn the oven on. 30 minutes, you got dinner. Now, check out the uh, crab meat stuffed portobello mushrooms. Oh, yeah, babe. See that? Real simple with that. We're just going to take, take it and uh, get one like this real nice, 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 nice on the plate. And then what I like to do is I like to just take a little bit of parsley and maybe like a little bit of chives. Shh, and don't tell anybody this. Little extra virgin olive oil like this. There you have it. A little crab meat stuffed portobello mushroom. Hey, stick around because when we come back, we're going to stuff it up another night. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I'm Emeril Lagasse. We're stuffing it up tonight. Yeah. Oh, yes. The unbelievable stuffed crab meat portobello mushroom that we roasted, and we just served that up, drizzled with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Yummy, yummy. 
And then we have a artichoke and mushroom stuffed trout with lemon or lemon <laughs> in the oven. 375, 25, 30 minutes, folks. Don't be sticking any toothpicks in them either. They didn't do anything to you. So, what we're going to do now, when the trout's are finished, and as I said with both dishes, you could easily, easily make this the day before, right? Getting them out of the pan is the tough part. Zero problem. Now, I'm going to simply serve these trout on something that's becoming very, very, very quite familiar now, it's particularly in the restaurant world. And these are called microgreens. What does that mean? Well, there are all different sorts in here. There are little beet ones. There are shod ones. There are a little bit of mosh. So they grow them really, really small, and then they just whoop. So they're like teeny. And they have full of flavor because they're just so young and delicious. I don't like to do a lot with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to season them with a little salt. Excuse me. And pepper, just a little bit. Then I'm going to drizzle some extra virgin olive oil. That's when you want to use that good oil. Do you want to use... Do you want to use a vinegar on top of that? I don't know. I got lemon in the fish. Please. <laughs> Little lightly toss, real simple. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over for one of the trouts. Come on, cooperate. Cooperate. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, if you're afraid of doing what I'm doing right here, transporting it, look at that. How simple is that? With the lemon? Oh, yeah, man. And then just to finish it, I like to just hit it with a little bit more of that olive oil like that. Light, clean, delicious. And the great thing is there's no bones. A lot of this whole fish preparation that you have, you know, especially if you got young ones, you always, when you roast them whole, you got to worry about the bone thing. Thing I love about this fish, they already removed them. They're stuffed, ready to go. All right, so there's the stuffed trout. Now, where am I going next? That's a good question. <laughs> I was thinking from my friend Chris down there in the butcher, who uh, sent up some beautiful veal chops that we'd stuff them. So what I began doing is cooking a little pancetta that he also... Now, if you don't have pancetta, you can use regular bacon. What you want to do is you just want to brown it up. And then I'm going to just take it out right now. But I want to use that flavor. People, they say, I think bacon fat rules, you know? Oh, yeah. uh, Make a big deal these days, you know, this shea butter and all this cream butter and oh, oh. Put some pork fat on your face. That'll straighten you up. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I got my little container right in the refrigerator. I just... <laughs> now, I'm going to add a little bit of onion to that. Little garlic, some thyme, and then we got to season that. So I'm going to season it some fresh ground pepper, some salt, a little bit. Once it's cooked, you're going to want to get this caramelized. So it's going to cook about 12 minutes. So the onions are going to get real sweet. Once that happens, we're going to add the pancetta back in here and we're going to let it cool. Are you with me so far? Yeah. 
That's where I am right here. See how caramelized the onions are? They get really sweet. Come with me for a minute on a journey. Sweet onions, little thyme, garlic. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some mascarpone cheese. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> Sour cream is just not the same. We're going to fold that mascarpone into that sweet onion mixture. Now we've got another stuffing. Now, we're going to take our veal chop. Now, that's a veal chop. Beautiful loin chop like that, you know? You can feel the love already. So what I want to do is I want to make a pocket. So you can use a traditional bony knife or my favorite paring knife. We're going to go from here. Not all the way through, folks. See that? We're going to make a pocket. Oh, how cute. <laughs> right down to the bone. Now, I'm going to take that sweet onion mascarpone, stuff it inside. Season them with salt and pepper, and I'm going to start searing them. When we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Stick around. We'll be right back. Rock it. time so far. Yeah. Emma Lagasse here was stuffing it tonight. Stuffing it. Oh. All right. So the veal chops are now stuffed with that mascarpone caramelized onion stuffing. Now the outside here, we're going to add some fresh ground pepper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Salt. We'll take a little bit of vegetable oil in that hot skillet. You know, you don't add a lot of oil. We're not frying them. We'll turn the heat up now. It's hot. <laughs> so the seasoned side down, we're going to put first. Now, what happens? You take something cold at room temperature like this to the oil. It's going to knock the temperature down. Move them in there. And that one right there. Now, why only three? Well, there's one for you and two for me. <laughs> We're going to take a little bit of pepper now on this side. Now I want to jack the heat up pretty high. Set the oven on 400 degrees because we're going to finish them in there. Let's talk a little bit about a sauce for this. I always get that www.helpmeineedasauce.com thing. <laughs> so, in a sauce pot, some shallots or shallots. Or you could use red onion. A little thyme. Why? Thyme, veal, oh yeah, they go together. Thyme, dill, uh, I don't know. It's a stretch. <laughs> little fresh parsley. And you got to have a little garlic in there, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little salt and a little pepper. Let it just kind of get happy a little bit. And then we're going to add some red wine. <laughs> what kind of wine? I don't cook with any wine I wouldn't drink. So, you know, they got these wines there in them stores. Who knows where they're coming from? They don't even have a label, some of them. Uh-uh. 
No, no. You could always add a little more. Generally, my rule of thumb generally for a sauce for about four people is a half a bottle of wine. The other half you can drink while you're watching the sauce reduce. So we're going to let that reduce. Now we're going to turn over our veal chops gingerly, gingerly. Working with the bone here. See, I didn't go into the meat. I'm working with the bone. I don't want to squeeze all that stuff out of there. All right, now, turn them over, and we're going to go to the oven. Four hundred degrees, we're going to go for about 15, 18 minutes. We're looking for like about a 150, 145 internal temperature. Okay? Sauce is reducing. What happens when the sauce, this reduces by half. When that reduces by half, it looks like this. Now what I want to do is I want to take some beef stock or veal stock, beef broth. We're going to add some of that in there now. And we want to let this reduce by another half. You with me so far? Yeah. All right, there's a test at the end of this. Now, what are we going to serve with these veal chops? Right now, asparagus is in season. Watch how simple this is. Cut the ends off. Do you want to peel them? It depends how big they are. Any bigger than what I got in front of me, you want to peel them. What we're going to do is we're going to take red onion. I tell people all the time to cook more with red onion. It's delicious. Or shallot. Now, we're going to take some olive oil. We're going to put this into a skillet. We're going to take that skillet right there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come and we're going to put the onion right in the pan. Now, onion starts getting nice, nice and happy. Little pepper, little salt. And I feel like I'm in the citrus mood tonight. So, take a nice orange. They're in season right now. Add some orange juice. Add the oranges. Wow, he's on fire. <laughs> Take the asparagus. Put them in the pan. Now, let it cook for about two or three minutes. You could add a little chicken broth or you could add a little water. All right, we're going to spread them out right here. And we're going to let them cook with that little flavor of orange. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, chops are in the oven, sauce is on the stove, asparagus is on the stove. Here comes dessert. Yeah. Right about this time of the year, all these pears are really delicious that are out there. This happens to be this brown pear called a Bosch pear. Wow. You want to peel them, okay? You're going to peel them. Then, we're going to make sort of this little syrupy sauce to poach them in. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take sugar, water, a few cloves, and a cinnamon stick. And this is sauterin wine. It's a sweet wine. You don't have to buy the expensive stuff, okay? If you can't find a sauterin, you could use a Riesling as long as it's sweet. We're going to add some of that in here. You know the motto, half and half. Now we're going to start the syrup in here. I'm going to peel the pears. When that pear's peeled, I'm going to put the pears in the syrup, and we're going to start poaching them to their fork tender. When we come back, the whole shebang gets put together. Stick around. Start giving. Welcome back. Emma Lagasse here. We're stuffing it tonight. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Let's recap where we're at right now. Veal chops are in the oven. 
getting delicious. And uh, the word at the commercial break was that we had more pink fans than uh, a little bit more than Midwell fans. So uh, we're going to work around that 150. Then the asparagus are on, flavored with uh, red onion and orange. And, of course, our sauce is reducing. I got it kind of high right now because I'm trying to get that evaporation thing going on, that concentration of the sauce. It's getting very close. Now I'm going to turn this down a little bit, and I'll show you how we're going to finish that. Over here, we had the sugar, the water, the sauterne, clove, cinnamon stick, brought it up to a boil, dissolved the sugar. Then we took our raw, peeled Bosch pears, and we poached them in there, simmering, until they were fork tender. That's where we are right now. So, here's where they are when they're, they're delicious just like this. Don't throw the syrup out. Reduce the syrup down. It's tasty. Sometimes what I'll also do, huh, it's a little stretch, but I'll reduce it down like I have right here. If I don't use it for a sauce, I'll strain it and I'll use it for an ice cream or a sorbetto. Fantastic. All right. Now, before we put the veal chop together, let's go back over here to Pear World. In this bowl, my friend downstairs, we have the beautiful gorgonzola cheese, blue cheese from Italy. Then, a little cream cheese and a little honey. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> now we're going to mix those ingredients together. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put them in a pastry bag and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with them. But first, the veal chops. When you're ready to go, here's what we're going to do. First thing, we're going to finish the sauce. Right at the end, you take a little bit of unsalted butter. Unsalted. Watch what it's going to do. It's going to give this sauce just a little bit of sheen to it, a little more body. Now, do you want to strain it? Hey, if you want to strain it, strain it. You're not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm not straining it. I love them shallots. Now, when you add butter into a sauce like this, just a little bit. We're not making a butter sauce. We're just giving it a little body, a little sheen. See how shiny that is right now from a little bit of butter? Huh. Them cows are smart. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is we're going to go get the veal chops. I smell them. I know they're delicious. I know. You know, Doc, you know, the, you know, you, you say we've got a cool handle. <laughs> Put it in the oven. It ain't cool anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> so now we got our veal chops. All right. All right. Look at that. Here's what I like to do. What we're going to do is this. We're going to... Uh, Take our asparagus. I know they're done. Turn them babies off. And we're going to come over here to the old platter. We're going to take our delicious asparagus. Put them right on the bottom here. A little bit of that red onion. Oh, yeah. Come on, babe. <laughs> and it's got just enough of that orange... Then we're going to take the veal chops that are stuffed, again, with that bone. So we're going to set them one here. Oh, we're going to set another one here. Oh, yeah. We're going to set another one here. Oh, and then we're going to take that delicious sauce that we had, and we're just going to put a little bit over here and a little over here like that. Oh, yes. Oh. There you have it, a little stuffed veal chop. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the pear. We're going to cut it in half. Then with a melon baller, what you're going to do is we're going to take these little seeds out. Who wants to eat them? So we take, get rid of the seeds. You with me? Get rid of the seeds. Then, that delicious gorgonzola 
cheese mixture. What we're going to do is we're going to put one like this, and we're going to put one like that. We're going to pick it in the old pastry bag like this, cut the tip off. Watch this. We're going to stuff it. We're going to stuff it. Then we're going to take some toasted walnuts, put some walnuts like that, and then, like I said, don't throw out that syrup because you take that sauterne syrup and float that in the bottom almost like a little soup, almost like a little soup, so you're eating the pear. You got the gorgonzola, you got the sauterne, and you got Emerald Lagasse. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'll see you tomorrow.